Hallelujah. How are we doing this evening? Amen. Let's prepare to enter into the presence of God. We're going to ask Pastor Angie if you would come open us up in prayer. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness towards us. Thank you for another opportunity to step inside your house, to offer up our sacrifice of worship and praise unto your holy name. Father, as we stand before your throne, I ask that you forgive us. Forgive us of anything that we have done, said, contrary to your word, disobedient. But God, wipe us clean like David said, creating us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us that as we step before your throne, Father God, that our prayers be not hindered, our worship be not a stake in your nostrils, but it be pleasing unto thee, Father God, I ask that you set a special blessing on every heart, soul, and mind that is pushed to assemble themselves here on today, Father God, even those that are watching our social media, Father God, that you just sweep through the room, sweep the house and let your glory fill the temple. We're careful to give you all the praise because it is due your holy name. Prophet, I bless to preach word that is coming forth. Every song that is sung and uttered unto your holy name. Prophet, God, every instrument that is praised. Father God, we release it unto thee and set it before that altar that you bless and sanctify it and make it holy for your peace, God. That hearts are changed. Minds are changed. Brokenness is mended. Father God, we give you all the glory because we understand that there is nothing like you and how excellent is thy name, O oh God, in all the earth. We lift you high that you draw. You draw, you draw, you draw. And we're careful to give you all the praise. Let us be your holy name in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
anybody else's praise report. Like, like for real. Like for real. And if you listen to the author when he sings the song, he he writes that on the day when he was feeling kind of crazy. Things was kind of not going like he wanted it to go. But he said, when I looked at it from the right perspective, sometimes we just need to change our perspective. When I look at, look at it from the right perspective, not only have you been good, so good, you've been better than good. Anybody else won some battles you really wasn't supposed to win? I shot. When I look back at the things you brought me through, one thing I think about often is my life could be so much different because of the choices I made. But he's been better than good. Campbell say, ooh, ooh, good. He's been so good. That even on my worst day, I still have to praise you. I'm just trying to help somebody. Even on my worst day, I still have to praise you because on my worst day, you still been good. When things are not the way I wanted it to be, you still been good to me. Has he been good? I know he's been good to me. My heart is filled with praise. When I think about the goodness of God and all that he's brought me through, when I think about it and all he's done for me, the prayers that he's answered when he didn't have to. He's been so good to me. Amen. How are we doing this evening? Amen. Does anybody have any questions or topics they would like to discuss tonight? I have a question. Okay. What is the four winds? When they talk about the four winds, what is that? What's the scripture? I don't know. Okay. Get the scripture and then we can look at it. Anybody else have any questions or topics they want to discuss? Get it and we can come back to it at the end. All right, well, let's turn in our book to Nehemiah, and we're going to read from the second chapter, the first and the second verse. When you have it, say amen. You might have to use your index. It's not one we go to, and it's not a big book. We used to learn the books of the Bible. Page 735 in my Bible, if you haven't found it yet. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> it's after Ezra. This is, in the Old Testament, you have the major prophets, then you have the minor prophets. Nehemiah is one of the minor prophets. <clears throat> says, and it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King, I got this, Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. Therefore the king said to me, Why is your face sad since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart, for I became dreadfully afraid. <clears throat> I'm going to speak from a thought tonight. Attitude fit for a king. Attitude fit for a king. Yes. Now to 
that I'm going to still pick on your song, Take Me to the King. <laughs> uh, it was dangerous to have a bad attitude or not look presentable in front of a king. So the attitude of a king. So with the plane, there's what's called the attitude of the plane. And the attitude is in orientation of the nose of the plane to the rest of the plane. So when the nose of the plane is higher than the body of the plane, the attitude is higher. When the nose of the plane is lower than the rest of the plane, the attitude is lower. So the altitude is the height of the plane in reference to the ground. So some of us has heard that your attitude will affect your your attitude will affect your altitude. That's very true in the plane. When the attitude is higher, the plane is going higher. And when the attitude is lower, the plane is going lower. Yes. So attitude does affect altitude. Okay. In life, that same thing applies. Your attitude can have a great impact on the altitude of how high you go. Uh, sometimes our attitude can cause us to be blessed or sometimes our attitude can cause us to miss blessings. Uh -huh. For the married people in the house, sometimes you're headed home and you're excited about seeing your spouse and you have this one scenario in your mind and you're excited to see them and you think they're going to be excited to see you, but when you walk in and their, their attitude does not match what you expected, it affects the whole altitude. You don't have to say amen, just keep looking straight. Your attitude really affects everything about you. Your attitude will even open and close doors for you. Sometime on the job, people with a better attitude will get promoted or recognized more than somebody more skilled or qualified simply based on attitude. Your attitude can cause you to miss out. One evening, my wife and I had had uh, dinner and we was leaving and we seen a lady uh, that was, uh, we figured she was homeless but wasn't sure and uh, we we stopped. We we were gonna give her some money to help her out, uh, but she had a bad attitude. And uh, so while we were talking, I was like, I said to my wife, I was like, you want to just go on and bounce? I mean, we trying to be a blessing, but she's about. And my wife was like, well, let's let's stay. Then later, my wife was like, let's just go on and move on. And I was like, well, but she come real close to missing out on a blessing simply because of her attitude. How I many know sometime in life we can miss out on a blessing because we have a bad attitude? As I was doing some research, I looked up something. I, I looked up. Uh, the future of arrogant versus humble people. It says arrogant people are usually unpleasantly proud and behaving as if they are more important or no more than other people. And this is the thing about arrogant people. Usually they're good at what they do. But they end up alone because people get tired of dealing with them. Verses it says, uh, humble people usually end up more likely to see, to succeed. And it's interesting, it said, humble people even look more attractive. Have you ever seen someone that was not attractive at first, but the more you got to know them, the better they looked? Mm -hmm. And then you see some people that are attractive, but once you get to know them, they are not as attractive because of their attitude. So we're going to talk about attitude fit for a king. The, the Bible says, God said, let's make man just like we are. So if you want to know something about God, you can kind of look at people because we're made in his image. 
So the Bible says that he is king of kings and lord of lords. So how many know there should be a certain uh, attitude when we come in the presence of the king? So when we come to church, uh, you know, we come, we get a byproduct of being in the presence of God. We come to church and we feel good because we've been in his presence. But how many know coming to church is not really about us? We come to church to present God a sacrifice. That's what we come. So when we come to church, it has nothing to do with us. It's all about him. But because we get in his presence... We get the effect of being in his presence, which makes us feel good. Now, one challenge is there's a saying that familiarity brings breeds content. So what that means is sometimes the more I'm around someone, the more I can, if I'm not careful, start to take them or take the relationship for granted. Uh, it happens in the home. Sometimes the, the children don't have the appreciation of their parents because they start taking them for granted. And then after they move out, they have a greater appreciation. Somebody said, the older I get, the wiser my parents become. No, they was always wise. You just didn't appreciate the wisdom. It happens in church. It's, it's amazing. With Jesus, the Bible said when he got around his own people, he couldn't do much. He could only do a couple of miracles. But the same Jesus, when he went to the next town, healed everybody in town. When he left, there was not a sick person left in town. But when he was around his own people, the Bible says he's amazed. One of the only times I remember the Bible saying Jesus being amazed. And he was amazed at how the people didn't appreciate him. But they couldn't appreciate him because they knew too much about him. Yes. Wow. They said, isn't this the carpenter's son? He's doing miracles, but I know him. I remember him when, so he's nobody special because I have history with him. So sometimes we get familiar with people and we start, if we're not careful, we can lose the appreciation of who they really are. I, I was thinking about, it's amazing, my wife and I was talking about how when people been saved a long time, how the attitude changed. I remember uh, when people were baby Christians, uh, they wanted to be in church so much that if there was nothing going on at their church, they found someone else's church to go to just because they wanted to be in the presence of church. Yes. But after you've been saved a while, now I can't. I'm too busy for these engagements. <laughs> so familiarity can bring contempt, even in our relationship with God. When I first got saved, I was oh so grateful. But now that I've been saved a long time, uh, it started out. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. But after I've been saved a while, it's like, dang, it's, it's church night. When, when I first got the job, I was so excited. I was excited when I was notified that I got the job and I couldn't wait to start. But after I've been there a while now, I'm saying, thank God it's Friday. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. When I first got the car, I was excited. I took it and I showed it to my friends and family. But after I've had it a while, now I start complaining about every little issue. So attitude that's fit for a king. So when we come in the presence of God, there's a certain attitude that we should have when we come into the presence of God. Yes. Amen. So it says that when he was before the king, he took wine and gave it to the king. It says, now I had never been sad in his presence before. 
The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him. That's the attitude we should have when we come before God. This is the, the, the earthly king that Nehemiah is the cupbearer. And it says, I had never been sad in his presence before. And two says, therefore, the king said to me, why is your face sad? The king noticed his sad appearance, and then it says, this is nothing but sorrow of heart. And then he said, I became dreadfully afraid. Why? Because I had entered into the king's presence with the wrong attitude or the wrong facial expression, uh, and, and, and knowing the authority of the king, now I realized I could be in trouble because I had the wrong attitude when I entered the king's presence. He said, I became not just afraid, but dreadfully afraid. Why? Because I, re I realized the power that the king had, and I realized the attitude I should have when I come into his presence. How many know there's a certain attitude we should have when we come to the church? People shouldn't have to pump and prime you and beg you to praise God. You should come in ready. Why? Because God is being good to me. I was at a place and I seen an old classmate today and I said, it's good to see you. He said, it's good to be seen. Why? Because he's been dealing with some challenges in his health and I asked him about his brother. We went to school together and he said he buried his brother four months ago. So so he has a different attitude about day-to-day -day life. I've had some challenges, but it's nothing but the grace of God that has me here. We ended with the song, You've Been So Good. Is that anybody else's story? I've had some challenges, but even in the midst of my challenges, God, you've still been good. So in the midst of my challenges, I still have an attitude of praise. Yes. Let's go to 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter. Somebody say, Lord, have my attitude. Lord, have my attitude. 2 Samuel. Um, for time's sake, we know the story of, of King David dealing with the authority of the king. So we know that it was a time when they went to war, but David stayed back and, and he was at home and he seen Bathsheba, Bathsheba bathing and he had her brought and they had an affair and she became pregnant, and David wanted to cover it up. So, uh, how many know what, what's done in the dark sooner or later will come to the light if you don't change your heart? Yeah. Church I used to go to, the pastor used to say, repent now while it's still a secret. So, uh, but, but it's good to have somebody in your life that's willing to risk the relationship to keep you in line. Somebody in your life that won't hold you accountable, I would question how much they really love you. Uh, somebody that, that's in your life that won't challenge you when you're wrong is I dare call them a friend. So, so David had someone in his life, a prophet, Nathan, and 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 and. and Nathan went to the king and told him the story about uh, one guy, he, he wanted to have a party, so uh, he didn't sacrifice uh, all the lambs he had. He sacrificed somebody else's lamb, and, and David said, this guy should be put to death. It's amazing how we want to crucify somebody else when they caught up in a fall, but when we're caught up in a fall, we want mercy. 
sometimes we make one bigger than the other, but how many know unforgiveness is just as big a sin as anything else? So David said, this guy should be put to death. And Nathan said, you are the man in verse 7. So when we go to 15, it says, then Nathan departed to his house. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David. And it became ill. It's interesting. The Bible don't even refer to her by name. But the Bible still says this was Uriah's wife. David therefore pleaded with God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. So the elders of his house arose and went to him uh, to raise him up from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat, nor did he eat food with them. 18 says, Then on the seventh day it came to pass that the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. Why? Because they understood as the king, why could nobody say anything to David? Because as king, he could have anybody killed and no one could challenge it. So here they seen David in distress when, his, when, his, when his, his, his child was sick. And now that the child was dead, they was afraid to tell him because they didn't want to come before the presence of the king with bad news. How should we come before the king of kings? We should come in ready to praise. We should come in ready to rejoice. Why? We're coming in the presence of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Somebody say, Lord, help my attitude. Let's go to the book of Daniel. Daniel 1 and 8 says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God brought Daniel into the uh, to the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my Lord and king who has appointed your food and drink. For why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. So we have to really understand the attitude that's required to come before the king. So tonight we're talking about an attitude fit for a king. Uh -huh. When I come into God's presence, what's the right attitude that I should have when I come into his presence? Not an attitude of, man, I have to be there. Uh -huh. An attitude we say, we don't have to, we get to. I get to come in the presence. I get to offer an offering of sacrifice to the Lord God, to the King of Kings. I get to present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is only my reasonable service. It's no more than I'm supposed to do. Let's go to Genesis, the 49th chapter. They create their own song list, but how I many you know we couldn't have ended we couldn't have ended with a better song than you've been good to me. So well, Genesis fifty one. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required of him. 
for such are the days required for those who are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him 70 days. Now when the days of mourning were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your eyes, please speak in the hearing of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, behold, I am dying in my grave, which I, uh, behold, I am dying in my grave, which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. There you shall bury me. Now, therefore, please let me go up and bury my father, and I will come back. He honored his father's wishes. So, uh, but we know that the history with Joseph, he was betrayed by his brothers. And Joseph was second in command. Only one higher than Joseph was Pharaoh. And 14 says, and after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt and his brothers and all who went up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So, one thing about our attitude, we also have to have the right attitude toward God, but how many know we have to also have the right attitude toward other people? Yeah. When the Bible talks about in and at the gate, it, it, it says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was uh, thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. And it says, what you've done to the least of my Children, you've done it unto me. How many know uh, the, the way we treat our brothers and sisters is a reflection of our relationship with God? So this means sometime I will have the opportunity to get back at those that hurt me. But when my attitude is right, I won't take advantage of it. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> As my father would say, uh, when, when you're having trouble, the scripture is your sins will find you out. Mm. When I'm having trouble, many are the afflictions of the righteous. <laughs> but attitude fit for a king is not only the attitude we have toward God, mm -hmm. but it's also the attitude we have toward others. Why? Because I'm in a, a kingdom relationship. So here we know that Joseph's brothers mistreated him is an understatement. But now that the father is dead and, 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 and Joseph, like any other king, could have them killed, uh, and, and they're wondering if Joseph is going to repay them for the evil they've done. Can I tell you, sometimes we sit around... And, and we're waiting on an apology from people that hurt us. Sometimes they apologize and sometimes they don't. But whether they apologize or not, we have to let them deal with that. Yeah. We can't get stuck because, you know, uh, talking about how life, how fast life goes by. When you get stuck in a place of hurt, life goes on, but you stay there. And you miss out on the opportunities of life moving forward because you're stuck in a bad place. Amen, amen. Now, I, I, I believe Joseph and everything he went through, he still maintained a good attitude because when he went to Egypt, God caused him to prosper and have success. I don't believe God would have gave him that success if he would have been around here complaining to everybody about how bad he had been treated by his family. See, sometimes we have to move on from the hurt. We have to move on from the pain. Uh, when we get sick, we're, we're glad when we start feeling better. How many know the same thing spiritually? And we can get hurt spiritually, but at some point, we got to move on. Yeah, yes, that's right. If you don't heal, that's a reflection that something is wrong with you, not the virus. There's something wrong with you. Because the virus is just doing what it does. Yeah. 
But we're supposed to get healed. If you break a bone, uh, if, if you break your leg and 20 years later, you still crippling around on that leg. Something's wrong. You didn't heal properly. At some point, we got to heal and move on. Otherwise, we miss out on a brand new day. Yes. Amen. Because the calendar is going to change. It's just a matter of, am I going to change and enjoy today, or am I going to be stuck in the sorrow of yesterday? As long as I'm stuck in the sorrow of yesterday, I can't enjoy today. That's right. Amen. Attitude fit for a king. Mm -hmm. So they said, uh, Wonder is he going to repay us for the evil which we did to him? So they sent messengers to Joseph saying, Before your father died, he commanded saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers for their sins, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of your servants, of the, of the God of your father. And Joseph went when they spoke to him. Now, they sent a message saying, Joseph, before your father died, he gave a command <laughs> that, that you better forgive us. <laughs> now, I question, is that the truth? Because the father could have said that to Joseph himself. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they're saying, now daddy said that that you got to forgive us for the evil that we done. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. But it says, Then his brothers also went and fell before his face and said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am in the place of God. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I'm in a godly place. Yeah. You've done me wrong, but I'm in a godly place. Somebody got to hear this. I'm in a godly place. Lord, help me to get to that godly place. Yes. Where I can forgive people that hurt me. Where I can move on. See, it's a godly place when you can move from the hurt and enjoy life. Yeah. He said, I'm in a godly place. Y'all tripping. Y'all know it was wrong. I know it was wrong. But guess what? The hand of God has been on my life. Can anybody else see how the hand of, hand of God has been on your life in the midst of people trying to sabotage, in the midst of people trying to work against you, in the midst of people trying to hurt you, trying to bring your name down? I'm still in a godly place because in spite of that, I'm still standing. No matter what, I'm still standing. So I'm in a godly place. My prayer is that we all get to a godly place where we can move on, where we're not stuck in the hurt of the past, yes. where we can enjoy today fully Amen. because we're in a godly place. Amen. It's the attitude fit for a king. Amen. He's a king, but so are we. Amen. We're made in the image of God. Amen. We're seated with him in heavenly places. So when we talk to each other, we're talking to kings and queens. We're dealing with kings and queens. Mm -hmm. But we have to be in a, a, in a godly place, in a godly state of mind to really enjoy where we are. It's all a mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Am I going to let yesterday keep me from enjoying today? Because as long as I'm really stuck in yesterday, I can smile, I can laugh, I can giggle, but I'm not really enjoying life. Why? Because I'm, I'm here today, but I'm wounded. I'm carrying the wounds of yesterday. I, I'm, I'm here today, but, but I'm still thinking about yesterday. So as long as I'm thinking about yesterday, I can't fully engage today because I'm trying to take yesterday into today. Each day we wake up with new grace. We wake up with new mercies. But guess what? That does us no good if we bring the pain from yesterday into today. I can't enjoy today fully. I have to understand that God has put me in a godly place with him.
So it doesn't matter what happened yesterday, because guess what? I can't change yesterday anyway. So I might as well enjoy the day. Come on, tell somebody, go ahead and enjoy the day. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for always being with us. We thank you that you ordered our steps. No matter what we face, no matter what weapon the enemy formed against us, Father God, we are still standing. And we are grateful to you, God, that you preserved us. You protected us. It didn't matter. We thank you, God, that you brought us through the storm to tell about it. We thank you for the victory, God, that you put in us. You made us to be more than conquerors. So whatever challenge we face, God, we thank you that as long as you are on our side, we come out victorious. So we thank you for the victory. God, we leave the hurt. We leave the pain. We leave the disappointments. And yesterday, and we embrace today so we can enjoy it to the fullest. Father, we thank you that Jesus died. He redeemed us from the curse. He thank you that he's making intercessions on a daily basis for us. Father God, we thank you for we have a high priest that can relate to whatever we go through. He can relate to being hurt. He can relate to being betrayed. But he came to give us life that we might have life that more abundantly. And Father, we make a choice to walk in what Jesus came to give us. And we thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name. If you're watching and you haven't given your life to Jesus, or if you were with him at one time and somehow you're not where you should be, if you died tonight, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? If you're not where you should be spiritually, you can make a change right now. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open up, I will come in and have fellowship. If you're not where you should be spiritually, I want to invite you to just pray a simple prayer. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Ask Jesus to come in your life to be your Lord and Savior. Ask Jesus to live in you and live through you. Ask Jesus to help you in the areas where you struggle. It's no secret. He don't hold it against you. He's a help in a time of trouble. So ask him to help you. And make the decision to live your life fully for God from now on. We believe when you pray that prayer that God hears you and God responds. Heaven rejoices not over the 99, but it rejoices over the one. If you made that decision, know that heaven is rejoicing. Heaven is celebrating, and we're celebrating with heaven on the decision you made. That was the best decision you could make. We're here to walk this walk with you. You can write us Vision Family Ministries, P.O. Box 4325, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74159. We're located at 1962 North Sheridan at the corner of Sheridan and Virgin. We invite you to come out and be in service with us. Our service times are Sundays at 9 and 11 a.m. Wednesdays at 6.30. We invite you to come by and be in person. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your support. If you want to give, you can mail a check to the P.O. Box or you can give electronically. You can find us on the Givelify app. You can uh, give to us at, on Cash App, Dollar Sign, VFM, Tulsa. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. The phone calls, the text messages, the words of encouragement, how this ministry is impacting you. Thank you for tuning in. Our motto is it's not about your past. It's about your future. God loves you like you are, and so do we. Until next time.